who are you? Oh, my name is Neil Hamburger. I'm America's uh, one dollar funny man, and uh, which works out well here in Canada, where I think our dollars are now on par with each other. You know what? You really resemble Neil Hamburger, Edward Greenspan, don't you? Edward Greenspan? He was the guy in charge of the Fed in the States. Who do people say you resemble, Neil Hamburger? Ah, uh, people have said I look very much like actress Phoebe Cates from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's probably the one I hear the most. So you are America's number one funny man or are you the world's number one funny man? What are you today, Neil Hamburger? Well, I'm Ameri I was America's number one funny man and then I was the world's number one funny man, but then we lost uh, the license on those phrases, so we had to turn it over to uh, America's one dollar funny man and the world's one dollar funny man. Now, where does America's teen funny man come in? Cause you've been called that too, haven't you? Well, I'm also known as America's youngest comedian, which is, of course is an honor, and I'd like to thank those who uh, bestowed me with that honor. Now, Neil Hamburger, how would people describe a Neil Hamburger show? Well, it, it, most of them would say it was, it was a nightmare. It was uh, not, not the best night that they've had. Uh, people uh, have left sometimes during the show without describing it. Uh, they might mutter under their breath, but we don't, uh, we're not privy to what they actually said. How can there ever be a bad Neil Hamburger show, Neil Hamburger? Well, I, I personally don't believe that there, there ever was. I mean, I am giving every ounce that I have to give. And you watch a lot of these bands that uh, you play on your network. These guys are slobs who don't even try. They don't uh, make the effort to dress up. And you see what I'm wearing? If you can get this on film, this costs money to dry clean and to maintain some of these uh, dirty bands, you know, these filthy uh, rock and roll bands or some of the dance type of music are wearing, uh, you can smell under their, their underarms, you know, if they walk by you on the streets and they have uh, old food and the facial hair and that whole scene, and uh, that is unacceptable. And, and the people watching should not put up with it. Uh, you deserve better. How do you turn the haters into lovers, Neil Hamburger? Well, with a couple of jokes, normally. That's all it takes. That's what they're there for, is to laugh their fool heads off. Are there haters in the audience? And have you seen the haters turn into lovers, Neil Hamburger? It's usually the, the lovers that uh, turn, turn into the haters when you don't do, uh, you know, your greatest hit or whatever, and then they get angry. You might have read a situation where, uh, what is the guy uh, from the, the, the Beatles that died? Paul McCartney. He was doing a show, and he refused to play, uh, you know, one of their big hits, Sergeant Peppers or whatever. And an angry a lynch mob chased him through the streets of, uh, of Russia. What sort of stuff has been thrown at Neil Hamburger? Well, in, uh, in England, now I was touring over in England with uh, those lovable rascals, Tenacious D. And uh, we played some big, big venues. We're talking uh, football stadiums and things, you know. And those kids there, they have a coin in England. You don't have it here. It's called the two pence. And these things are, uh, th these are the size of your head. Get a shot of his head. These are big coins. And, and they will heave those things at, and they will just bounce off your skull, and they're slicing you, uh, you know, the whole thing. Very painful. And if somebody throws a ketchup packet, as happened recently in uh, Camden, New Jersey, that's not such a problem. You know, you, you get the hose, you go to a car wash after the show, yeah, spray yourself with a car wash, the high-pressure hose, and the ketchup comes right out, you know? Neil Hamburger, it's all about timing your movement, so isn't it? Well, you know, at the bigger venues, the large, you know, the Tenacious D type uh, venues, uh, you, the, the stage is 45 feet off the ground, and the person in the front row is half a mile back from you. So they, they can't hit you, you know. They'll throw things. They'll throw things till they're blue in the face, but generally they're going to miss you. You do get the odd, uh, you know, usually there are dart experts, people uh, who have won uh, ping pong tournaments and things. They're more accurate. That's who will nail you. That's who you have to watch out for. Those people line their coats with uh, frozen uh, cubes of soup, and it melts on the way in the air, and by the time it hits you, you know, ruined. But after seeing a particular joke, Neil Hamburger, and we're speaking here to Neil... Uh, hamburger. Neil Hamburger, is there a certain way you move after telling a joke? Because you can anticipate somebody throwing something. Yeah, you get good at it, but m mainly you have to have the eye-foot coordination. That any good athlete has it and any uh, failed comedian has it. And so as you see the item coming, you're, you're, you want to tell the punchline 
just in time so when the last word is out of your mouth, you step to the side and the object goes right by you. That is, that is professionalism. That's what Bob Hope had in the, in the, in the final days of his life when people would uh, fill the condoms, you know, with uh, bodily fluids and, and he'd hurl those at Bob Hope. He got real good at avoiding that. Neil Hamburger, when you were playing with Tenacious D, what joke caused the crowd to turn? You know, it was strange. The one that they did not like was a joke at the expense of those, uh, those uh, degenerate uh, pigs, Pink Floyd. Any mention of Pink Floyd, and everybody would just scream and yell. We were in Great Britain, and I was telling jokes about the, the late uh, Princess Diana. Didn't go over too well. But when you bring out the Pink Floyd, boy... The kids, they must be just icons to the youth of our generation. And that's sad because the music is of poor quality. What was the Pink Floyd joke that made them all turn on you? Well, it's not even uh, one of the better jokes, but uh, it is, uh, why did, uh, why did Al-Qaeda, under the direction of uh, Mr. Osama bin Laden, burn in a public town square in Kabul, Afghanistan, over 10,000 copies of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album. Well, because it's a horrible album. <laughs> Baboom! That's what I say, but uh, yeah, the kids weren't having any of it. Neil Hamburger, when you're looking on the audience there, I understand that you pick somebody in the audience and you focus on them even though you can't see them. Like if you're at Madison Square Garden, you'd pick on one person in the audience, pretend that you can actually see them when you actually can't. That's how you get through the show. So do you work for Carrot Top or something? Where are you getting this uh, insider information? Are you tapping my phones or uh, do you have some, some sort of radio wave into the brain? Or you're, you're with Carrot Top's people, aren't you? I think it might have been from one of your poolside chats that I learned that. Oh, yes, yes. Well, thank you for mentioning my very popular uh, internet uh, television show currently airing over at TomGreen.com. Thanks for bringing that up. I would have forgotten completely. Neil Hamburger, do you pick out somebody in the audience? Is that how you get through it? Because you're at Madison Square Garden, you're picking on somebody. You really do pick somebody out, even though you can't see the person, right? That's a little hint from Neil Hamburger, right? I know you don't want to give your secrets, but that is a hint, isn't it, Neil Hamburger? It, it's important to be focused. I'll say that much. Neil Hamburger, what sort of gifts have you got from the crowd? Did you at one time get a pitcher of water? Yeah, we got a pitcher of water, uh, geez, I think about six months ago, somebody... Uh, had that hand delivered uh, to my hotel room, which was a real, real uh, mark of success when you have fans, a fan base that dedicated. And Neil, you've done record signings at Value Village? We did one back uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the Value Village, that's right. We, we sold a couple of uh, 25 cent records. Neil Hamburger, your particular gel that you use, what is it? It's a special gel that you use, isn't it? Yes, it's, uh, it's imported. It's from Australia. It's called New Wave Hard Rock Gel. And uh, it is the most amazing product, and it is very sad that it's only available in one country. Neil Hamburger, Harp Magazine said, quote, Neil Hamburger died last week at a truck stop payphone. Did, uh, you know, I was, somebody told me that I was dead recently, and I wondered where they heard that. That was in Harp Magazine. What are people doing? Are they out to get you? Are there people out to get Neil Hamburger? Why would they say Neil Hamburger is dead? Well, you know, you get the agents for Carrot Top, because we're in direct competition, you know. Uh, and and the, he's got people all over the country trying to sabotage my career, you know. And that's what that was, more of his, his uh, crap. Can you say that in Canada, crap? Yeah. Neil Hamburger, when you're on stage, do you increase bar sales at places that you're performing at? That is the only thing I'm good for in life. That is uh, sort of my destiny. Uh, much as, as Christ uh, was, was born and died so that we all may have eternal life, I was born and will die uh, to help sales of Pabst Blue Ribbon and uh, Stoli Vodka. And why is that, Neil Hamburger? I don't know, because none of these uh, distilleries and breweries or anything have a, a, a second to spend talking to me about it. They just collect the money and uh, pitch me out the back door when they're done, you know? Record bar sales every time Neil Hamburger performs. Yeah, you know, I think there must be something in these jokes. But honestly, what it is is that a lot of the people that come out to my shows have severe emotional troubles, severe problems, uh, broken hearts, maybe they're lonely. 
uh, maybe they have uh, some sort of debilitating uh, mental illness of some sort, and they come out because they want to forget their problems for one night and just laugh and have a great time, laugh their heads off, you know? And when it doesn't work, they hit the bottle. Neil Hamburger, what's it like judging a drunken spelling bee? Oh, boy. That is really a lot of fun because uh, if I screw up and uh, mispronounce the word or whatever, nobody knows because they're all wasted out of their minds, you know. you got people coming up to spell a word and tripping, falling flat on their face. Uh, it is, I think, probably the most significant new trend of this decade, and uh, I'm very glad to be on the ground floor. But we're going to be doing more drunken spelling bees in the very near future. Now, Neil Hamburger, Kanye West or 50 Cent? you got a thing for us for Kanye West or 50 Cent? Well, I think uh, it was 50 cents. He's the guy that said he would retire if he was outsold. So I'm going to vote for uh, Kanye West to sell more records so we at least get one of them off the uh, music-making scene. And then we'll hope Kanye West makes a, a, a similar deal with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And we can just wipe out all these uh, po poor entertainers somehow. And you are Neil? Hamburger. And Neil Hamburger, what about some more jokes here about Corn, the Foo Fighters, or Nelly Furtado? Can you offer up any of those? I'll, I, you know, I don't have a joke, but I have something that's sort of interesting. Do you know uh, when th this isn't a joke, so uh, don't put this on good film. Use the secondary films. Get that down, though. Is that symbolic of your career, Neil Hamburger? The Comedy Fest banner falling down. It might be both of our careers after uh, today's interview, but uh, you know when the Foo Fighters did the um, that album, what was the, the album uh, with the two discs that they did recently? It was called uh, uh, Our Latest Album, Double Disc. And one, one, of the, uh, one of the discs was all acoustic and the other was all uh, electric. You know, they play... For those who are watching who don't follow rock and roll music, the Foo Fighters is a very popular uh, and wonderful uh, rock and roll band, you know, with the electric guitars and the um, screaming and crapping on plates and all the stuff that the rock and roll bands do. So they did this double album, one disc all acoustic, one disc all electric. And would you believe the day that came out, you know the famous Tower Records on the Sunset Strip, very famous record store. The day that record came out, they had to hire a waste disposal company to bring in a gigantic uh, dumpster the size of a Mack truck. And they had to put it right on the outside of the parking lot because as people drove out of the parking lot with their new Foo Fighters album, they were opening up, taking the second acoustic disc, and tossing them. By the end of the day, the entire dumpster was overflowing with disc two. It was very, very sad. Have you discovered your records anywhere, Neil Hamburger? Oh, yeah. Well, we had a similar thing, but it was a smaller dumpster because, uh, you know, we didn't press very many of them. But uh, I got a fine from, uh, the, uh, is it Cook County, in Ch where Chicago is? I got fined. I got summoned uh, to court there because there were so many of my unsold CDs in the landfills. And I guess they, they were leaching uh, toxins, you know, into the soil uh, at an unhealthy rate, you know. You're allowed to dump only so much motor oil uh, or uh, old paint, uh, household waste, uh, unsold CDs, any of these toxic things. And it was le it was leaking into the drinking water there. And uh, so we, we were in court for ages on that. Neil Hamburger, any jokes here regarding Justin Timberlake, Brad Pitt, Lindsay Lohan, or the Spice Girls? They're all horrible. Is that, is that what you want? Well, something a bit more specific, baboom. Uh, why did the Spice Girls cross the road? Well, to battle out with each other in bankruptcy court. Baboom, Neil! A uh, hamburger. What about Tom Cruise or Green Day or My Chemical Romance? Or I have some on, on, on uh, Mr. Cruz, but these are, you know, strictly triple X uh, rated type of jokes. Now, uh, you can't do that anymore on TV, thanks to folks like you who abused the system. Um, as for the other two, I don't, I don't have any material on them. I mean, we could take another joke about, uh, you know, my, one of my Dave Clark Five jokes and dust that off, maybe turn it into a chemical romance joke. Or a Green Day do joke. Green Day, you know, all the young groups. Neil Hamburger. Do you have a joke for Gerald Ford? Oh, we have actually about a dozen 
on those on Gerald Ford. I guess I'm curious. I'm interested in Gerald did Ford. You know, did you know that we had those jokes? I was told by Canadians canned ham that you have some Gerald Ford jokes. Yeah, we had a whole string of those, but uh, they're banned from Canada. When I was uh, entering through uh, the, the customs today, I was, uh, they took them from me. They strip searched me. I'd hidden the Gerald Ford jokes under my arm in a capsule, a little capsule. I'd rolled them up, put them in, a, uh, emptied out a vitamin capsule, rolled the Gerald Ford jokes up on um, Chinese fortune cookies on the back of those, rolled it up, put it in the vitamin capsule, put them under my arm, and I was standing like this. And the officer says, oh, what do you have there? And he scanned my passport, and he said, you have a prior uh, record for smuggling in uh, Gerald Ford jokes. We're going to have to search you. And sure enough, they found all five of these jokes I had, confiscated them. I don't have them anymore. I can't tell them. They're gone. So uh, I'm very sorry. Fortunately, we did record them on an album. What about Canadian jokes? Are canned ham featured in any of your jokes? Legends, cam, canned ham from Vancouver. You know, I wish they were. We're doing a Christmas album, uh, which is going to be released, I think, in February uh, with canned ham. I'm doing a, some guest appearances with the great uh, entertainment masters, uh, masters of song and dance and vaudeville canned ham. you got to have them on your show, huh? I love the canned ham. Well, why, why are you interviewing all these dirty uh, punk rock guys when you could talk to canned ham? Well, actually, I've talked to canned ham, but we're going right back to Neil... Uh, hamburger. So, Neil, any Canadian jokes? Any jokes that you've brought into Canada that you can tell the people out there? Oh, um... Something for the kids. Uh, why did uh, Burton Cummings leave the guest who? Guess who? Uh, because he had uh, his own album to do. Ba-boom! Yeah. Yeah, I know. But you are America's number one, the world's number one, the teen's youngest number one comedian, Neil... Uh, Neil Hamburger is uh, is the name, and uh, we are trying to uh, to uh, stay number one somehow, stay on top of things, you know, because uh, you can slip real fast, you know. As, as you, I'm sure you've interviewed some people on their way down, right? Who's on their way down? Well, a lot of these people, you know, the comedians, some of the ones you've probably talked to, musicians that you've interviewed, a lot of these people, it's over. Careers are over. It's, and that's me, too. You know, because uh, basically we, we all peak real early and then uh, you just sort of go through the motions. A lot of the groups you're seeing on Much Music this afternoon, are, uh, they don't have anything left to say, you know. They've given up. They'll keep recording, but uh, you, you can feel it, you know, when you watch the video. It, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sound good. They don't look good. And you, don't, you feel like washing your hands after hearing their latest single. And... Uh, that's too bad, but I'm afraid that's 90% of, of what's on the channel right now. How can you tell that they're bad? How do you get this feeling, Neil Hamburger? Well, it's like how when you see a man on the street, a homeless man, and you see that his, his pants are stained, yellow stains, and, and there's urine dribbling down his, uh, his pant, his leg, you know, you could say, oh, this man's probably not happy. And uh, similar with these groups, you, you see a sour sort of demeanor on their face and you hear an uh, ugly, ugly sound coming out of their mouths, you know. Neil Hamburger, any advice for the kids out there? Yeah, uh, go, go, do, go do something outside, you know. Maybe uh, learn to catch a ball or uh, mow a lawn, you know. Stop watching these degenerate uh, musical acts that uh, really can't hold a, a candle to the, the good old acts like the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra and that sort of thing, you know. Neil Hamburger, how did you end up on a VH1 behind the music with the Red Hot Chili Peppers? I was asked, you know, I'll do anything I'm asked. We, we'll do a VH1 behind the one uh, music special, whatever it was. Or uh, we'll, you know, play at a birthday party for six kids, you know. If they've got the five dollars and the pitcher of water, we're there. Now, I played at Madison Square Garden last year in December with Tenacious D. Uh, less than a month after that, I was playing at uh, Peppa's Pizza uh, in the, uh, the the back room, not the not the good room at Peppa's Pizza, the back room where there's no stage. I'm standing on a milk crate, uh, telling jokes to seven people, you know. So it, you got to be flexible in this business. Well, thanks so much, Neil Hamburger. Really appreciate the time. Why should people care about Neil Hamburger? 
Well, I just need them to, that's all. I, ju I just need that, you know. Just do me a favor. I mean, it's just not that hard for you to care a little bit, you know. It doesn't take any uh, money or time out of your, your horrible day, you know, that you're going to spend, uh, you know, eating uh, eating fecal type of food. Spend a little time instead uh, caring about somebody who's given uh, all that he has uh, to give and, and there's really nothing left, uh, Nardwar, to give. I'm afraid it's all over. Well, thanks so much, Neil. Please don't give up. Keep on rocking in the free world and do-do-do-do-do. Oh, oh.